listening to another episode of the Coaster 101 podcast. I'm Andrew Stilwell, and I'm joined this week by Nick Weisenberger. But also with Nick, we've got two very special guests on the podcast this week. Um, Nick and his family recently got back from a tribute, uh, a trip to Legoland, New York, the all-new resort that opened earlier this year. And being that Legoland is a park built for kids, I wanted to bring on Nick's kids to kind of talk about uh, their trip to Legoland. So uh, let's welcome to the podcast seven-year-old Henry. Henry, how are you? Good. And four-year-old Nora. Nora, how are you? Good. Perfect. And Henry, I'll start with you. I mean, you know, what when your dad and your mom told you they were going to when you were going to Legoland, you guys, I saw the video and we're going to post this video on our uh, on our website, but they kind of covered your eyes and you guys showed up at the Legoland Hotel. When you first got there, what what were you thinking when you got to the Legoland Hotel? Were you excited? Yeah. So excited. Because you got excited. Surprise! And it was party elevators and talking Lego people. I love yeah, it. And we got to strip on the on pilot bunk bed. How many steps down the ground and that goes on the bottom of the bunk bed? Yeah. yeah. It said uh, adults are not allowed in it, and we had to open up the safe to open. We got a TV album and some Legos to build. Yeah, and we had Lego shows on it. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, and we also have a Google. This week, I want and it even had doll videos. I bought it, didn't have doll videos because it really was like dolls. And my baby went here with my pinkity backpack. I love it. That's awesome. It sounds like you guys had a really good time. Yeah, so, so you guys didn't know we were going on to Legoland. We just told you we were going on a trip to Hershey because that was our first stop as we drove across Pennsylvania to get to New York. They had no idea where we were going to Legoland. So when we got there, we them closed their eyes and got them out of the car and then said, open your eyes, and we were at Legoland. Yeah. Perfect. Everyone <laughs> screamed. Yeah, and, and the Lego cows were, and it was so annoying. People kept <laughs> being mean there. They were throwing toys at the wall. But that was such oh, a no. But it was so fun. That's good. Henry and Nora, do you guys, do you build Legos at home? Yeah. Yeah. I, when we were at Horsey, when we went to the land, I wrote a dragon line for mine and I got a little picnic set. Nice. That's fun. So, a big Lego. You guys went to went to Legoland. What was your favorite ride at Legoland? Henry, you go first, and then Nora, you go after him. The Dragon Coaster. Why was that your favorite? Because there was a big dragon in it, and it blew fire. Yeah, so the first half of the roller coaster is like a dark ride. You go slow, and you go through a bunch of themed uh, sets. And what did we count? Try to count every time all the the rats. The Lego there's, rats. There was twenty three rats. One was dead and had his eye poked out because of the dragon. And I saw <laughs> his eye. It was on the track guy. Yeah. So you go through the, the slow indoor themed part, and then you go past the dragon, and then your your car kind of picks up speed, and then you go up the lift hill, and then that's where you go outside, and you go onto the the roller coaster portion, which yeah. is. I think it's about 50 feet tall and it's pretty, pretty big for a family coaster. So it's towards the, uh, I say the, the upper end. It's, I don't think it's quite as good as fire chaser express at Dollywood, uh, but it's a lot better than other family coasters out there. Yeah, for sure. And Nora, what was your favorite ride? The merry-go-round. The merry-go-round? Yeah. What did you like about that? What did you get to ride on? The mail go on that goes in the store and it called us party people because cause we got to hear music. That was my that's that's why I like it. Okay. Ooh, and Nick, I I saw you you posted on social media and you did a really good job. This is like it's a ba- it's almost like the equivalent of like a zero entry carousel. Like there's no no step up, so you can walk onto it, roll onto it if you're in a wheelchair. Um it's probably a, it's a definitely a good 
carousel for families, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, like you said, a lot of older carousels, you have to like step up and get onto them, but this one is like dug into a pit so that the, the, the main surface is, is level with the ground. So you can just easily walk or roll right onto it. And nice. That, and it's not just that, right? See, the entire park is really wheelchair accessible, stroller friendly. Uh, a lot of the rides have like separate loading stations for things like Perfect. that. So it's, yeah, it's very uh, family friendly park all the way. Yep. Awesome. Henry, did you, did you get to see any um, big Lego people? Did you get your picture taken with any of the big Lego characters? Yeah, we got to do the Statue of Liberty Lego. And, and Batman was the shop, but we didn't take a picture with him. What else did we see? We saw a vampire Lego. Yeah, we take a picture with him. Oh my gosh. That sounds so much fun. What are some of the other rides you rode? Did you ride the uh, the Lego factory ride where they turned you into a Lego? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 but one of them was not us. We got a microphone down, folks. Uh, yeah. And, we, and, we, and my other one was the way with the duple train. I had some of this duple that we had. And it had the train I had, but separate. It was really weird. We got to go on the really fun of it. Nice. So you have the you have the same Duplo uh, bricks that uh, you have at home. You got to ride on. Yeah, but Pep, some of them were not ours. They had a pineapple, which which we didn't have. Okay. So did did you guys get to walk through the uh, the the little mini Lego City, the Mini Land? Yes. Was that cool? Yeah, because it was really quick to get there. Like, right behind the old hotel. Did your mom and dad, did they buy you any Lego toys while you were there for you to build at home? Yeah. What'd you get while you were there? I got the astronomy tower and Nora got a picnic set. Nice. Very cool. I'm, not, I'm looking at there. Did you guys, did you ride the other, the little dragon coaster, the dragon's apprentice? Yeah. Yeah, I rode the little yeah, dragon. Yeah, you that one because you weren't tall enough to ride the big one. We yeah, but but guess what? I don't want to. But guess what? I got to go a, a picnic set because I was brave on the little coaster on the little dragon ride. You mean you were bribed to ride the coaster? Is what you're saying? <laughs> You were you were brave you were brave but you you were bribed. Nick, did you guys do the Ninjago ride at all? Yes, yes we did. We rode that three times. I I, I won that. I because I was in the pink seat. I mean the pink seat, and I won it. But the nice. Other day, me and Dad won it. Do you have to wear these really cool glasses? Which it, the three D glasses? Yeah, which looks like. The ninjas are in front of us, to, like they're doing a show, and at the really end, they chill for us. There's a lot of ninjas. Some of them are not ninjas. Okay, like that's them. really cool. Yes, that one. Really I want to know how to do ninja chops because I will not in gymnastics. Yeah, you were really good. We got we got a lot of karate yeah. chopping going on on the. Uh... I get so many points like hundred. More than hundred. That's awesome. Ten thousand. Uh, driving school, you learn to drive. Yeah, I got my driver's license two times, and I got my driver's license one time because I got my way on go. Which had the same name on. Nice. That was my birthday. Oh, that's very cool. I it was a that's a good birthday trip. Little mom, but is she not here? Oh. I have I got one more question for you, Henry and Nora, and you can go uh, if you want to, or you can stick around. If somebody wanted to take their kids to Legoland, why was it such a fun trip? Because we got surprised, and everything, yeah. and everything was Lego rich. Uh, it's a Lego big dish, and yes. there's so many Legos that you can do. You got to build with a lot of Legos. Yeah. I believe Henry, you said it was the funnest theme park you've ever been to. It was the funnest theme park I've ever been to. Yeah. Because it has my best thing ever. Legos. Awesome. You heard it here first. This is 
Henry has been to Disney World and he says Legoland New York is his favorite theme park ever. Right, Henry? Yes. Awesome. All right, Nick, when you um obviously we've covered Legoland New York kind of from its inception on Coaster 101. What was it about Legoland New York that made you want to take the family there? Uh, that was good to watch so many cool rides. Fun is why they made it no lice. Because we're twin. Right, can I answer the question now? Yeah, you can answer the question now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Right, can, you, can you be quiet for a minute so I can answer the question? I like my headphones. Right, let, let me answer the question, then you can have another turn. Can you hear them in the background? Like, are they too loud? No, just go with it. We're going to go okay. with it. Yeah, ever since Legoland was announced, well, we've always, I've always wanted to take the kids to a Legoland because uh, the, their target audience is for ages between 2 and 12, which is perfect for us. And so, you know, the, the past two years, it's been a little hard to, to travel to try to go to Florida or California. So when... Uh, Legoland New York was announced. That was, you know, within a somewhat reasonable drive for us. So I was like, oh, we're we're definitely getting there. You know, the year that it opens, and it, it finally opened this year. And yeah, it was it was awesome. What's the uh, what's the drive from you from uh, Ohio? Um, nonstop. I think it's like eight and a half or nine hours. But we did it over two days. We basically left on Wednesday night at about maybe 6 p.m. and drove six hours to Chambersburg, uh, Pennsylvania. Then we drove maybe a half an hour to Gettysburg and then an hour from there to Hershey, spent the afternoon at Hershey, and then it was, I think, three hours from Hershey to uh, Legoland. To make, a, to make a chocolate bar. You got to make chocolate bars too? What a trip. This sounds like so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And we rode the chocolate ride with the singing cows. And I got my Willie and Bruce to go this way. And dad and mom, I got my Willie and Bruce to go. I got small, it's like medium. What? Okay. Nick, I, when you um you checked in, you, you guys stayed at the Legoland Hotel, and again, going back to what you put on Twitter, it was one of the most like technologically savvy hotels that you had ever stayed in. What was it about the rooms? And I know you had kind of the the separate like family family suite that kind of had the kids' bunk beds and you know a room for mom and dad. But what was you know, what were some of the technology perks in the room that made it so high tech? Yeah, and I'm actually I'm putting an article up on the website that will have all this detailed as well. But um, from the moment you check in, it's, there's not like a normal check-in counter. You just go up to a, a kiosk and you scan a QR code that they've emailed you and it spits out your room keys. And then like in the elevator, you swipe your room key and it knows what floor you're on. Every room has a Google Nest yeah. in it instead of like the old <laughs> telephones. Um, if you want room service, you just text them on your phone. Um, so just a lot of little things like that. Yeah, it's, it seems like they're, they've... Ooh, Nick, Nick just caught some headphones to the face. I'm, you guys can't see this, but... Go build your nurse thing. We we had so much fun in the event. We, we did say our whole thing. For one day, and then we went to Lego, and it took so long to get to the Lego hotel. And and guess what? They had this little like hook thing that they this hook and they had this swing that has jewelry in it because that's a doll. I like dolls. Anything that is dollish. Very cool. You'd never been to any other Legoland before, had you? Um, I had actually been to Legoland California once back in 2006, but it was, um, I don't know if they still do this, but we went to the park like the last hour that it was open and we said, we just want to go in the gift shops. So they took an imprint of our credit cards and just let us wander the park for an hour before it closed. So we never, we didn't actually ride anything, but we, I did get to walk around Legoland California for, for an hour. Nice. But yeah. And I, I'd been to actually cypress gardens in florida before it became legoland mm -hmm. but i have not been back to either one of those parks lately so yeah, this was yeah. our it, and we do have a a new uh, legoland discovery center uh, that opened here in columbus two years ago 
but yeah, we have not been to a Legoland park. Recently. Yeah, I went to Legoland Florida back in 2019, and I had never been before. And it's it's one of those things I had always kind of grown up as a kid playing with Legos, and it even as like someone who was 30 years old with no kids, I had a really good time at Legoland. You know, because you're it's definitely rooted in that nostalgia. There's attractions for all ages to enjoy and i think it is definitely a really really good park for you to uh take your kids to so i commend you for taking the uh the nine hour drive to do it for sure i want to talk a little bit about what we think is probably the signature attraction at legoland new york which is the lego factory adventure and this kind of this was talked about Back at IAP in 2019, it's um, ETF trackless ride vehicle. Uh, there's some really cool tech from uh, all of us. But, you know, in a nutshell, what is the Lego Factory Adventure like? Oh, it's awesome. So like you said, it has the uh, the ETF trackless ride vehicles that uh, can move around, but they also have a motion base in them. So they can spin, they can tilt side to side, forwards and backwards. So there's a really wide range of motion. And yeah, it's 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 just magical. Like, because there's not very many trackless rides in the U.S. So when you're when you're standing in the station and then the cars come up with no driver, no track, it's a really like ooh an ah moment. And then there's like these three garage doors that are closed, and then when the ride starts, they open, and you go into this first room that's really big, and it's all uh, physical, practical sets around you. Um, the the ride really starts off with a wow factor. It's really cool. Nice. Yeah, you've got a uh, a really good write up on Coaster101.com that you wrote last week. Um, I know there's, like you mentioned, there's more Legoland New York content kind of coming down the pipeline here. You know, aside from the attractions that Henry and Nora talked about, what were some other standout attractions for you at Legoland New York? Uh, the the Lego Factory Adventure Tour is definitely by far my favorite ride there. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause there's, I mean, there's nothing else like that, you know, for a thousand miles around. I wanted to really like the Ninjago ride, but it <laughs> it didn't always work with some of the, the, the hand motion gestures, not working in audio, not working. We talked about the coaster was fun. We did the splash battle ride, mm-hmm. which they, they have similar rides, like a couple other parks where you kind of sit in a boat facing outwards and you have a, a a water gun where you have to spin a wheel really fast to shoot water out at targets and people on land can shoot back at you. So, I mean, fortunately it was about 75 degrees. So getting wet a little bit felt, felt nice. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, this time of year in New York, it's, I feel like it's hit or miss. So fortunately you got a pretty mild fall day, which is great. Yeah. The the weather was absolutely perfect. And the Friday we were there, there were no lines at all. So that, that really made for one of the best like theme park days we've ever had. That's awesome. Yeah, you go. I want to go back to that Ninjago ride you're talking about just for a second. And I, I did the same thing when I was down in at Legoland, Florida, and I kind of felt like a really bad nightclub DJ, just like flinging ninja <laughs> stars, like. And I was the only one in my car, so I definitely had the high score in my vehicle. But I might have ended up, despite not knowing uh, what I was doing, as you know that one of the high scores, the hour of the day, or. However they did it, you know, as someone who's highly competitive, loves a really good inter- interactive dark ride. I think uh, what they did over at Triotech with uh, the Lego Ninjago ride is actually really fun. We got Henry. Henry's back. No, no, no. Stop. <laughs> For... Sorry. Just trying to eat cookies. <laughs> We are we are officially off the rails here on the Coaster 101 <laughs> podcast. My chocolate bar. Mom's- that's your that's your chocolate bar from Hershey Hershey's Chocolate World. Yes. Uh, Last question I'm going to ask for you, and maybe if Henry and Nora come in, we can talk about the Chocolate World a little bit. You know, as a as a parent, why is Legoland New York such a good family destination? So one thing that uh, I wrote in my detailed review that's coming out is a majority of the rides they're not just passive sit back and watch something ride so they're they're active they're in interactive they require user input so like the, the kids have to interact with things whether it's the, doing this um, climbing tower ride where you have to pull a rope up to and then before you kind of free fall back down or the jago ride you have to 
you know, do all the hand movements or even on the, the Lego factory tour ride, there was a, a part where they're like, they're like, you got to wake up the dragon. So everybody, so everybody yell, you know, as loud as you can, that wasn't loud enough. Yell, yell louder. So like it really, it doesn't have, it doesn't impact the ride. Like it doesn't matter if you actually yell, but it's still like encouraging that, that user interaction. And yeah, just, and even compared to Disney, I think the Legoland parks are just the best parks for kids because there's more things for them to do. It's more kid friendly for them. You, there's, there's rides that you can go on as a family. There's rides that just the kids go on, like the driving school ride, only the kids do it. So it just makes them feel more grown up and it's, everything about it's just really family friendly. And they really thought a lot of things through. Got it. Let me ask you, and this is, you know, cost. We're not going to talk about the cost because the cost between the two are night and day. But would you, you know, as a dad of a seven-year-old and a four-year-old in Ohio or anywhere where it's not like a close driving distance, would you rather go to a park like Walt Disney World or would you rather go to Legoland New York? I like I would rather right now, like especially the way that with the things that are going on at Walt Disney World right now and the whole Genie Plus and having to pay extra to cut the lines and all that kind of stuff. If I wanted a Disney like experience, but not having to pay the Disney dollars, I would drive from here and I would go to Hershey number like first, because that's a Disney like experience where you, there's an Omnimover mover dark ride that's free and they give you candy at the end and then keep on driving there to Legoland, New York, where like there's, well, <laughs> there was no lines. Number one, where at Disney, you're going to wait. We went a full day on Friday and they, everything was basically a walk on or like, like one train wait. We went back on Saturday morning and it was a little busier, but still all the waits were real manageable. So like I would rather go there and have more time enjoying things instead of, (laughs) and plus too, like the layout of the park is a circle. Uh So it's really easy. (laughs) Like you either go left or you go right and you just do the rides as you want to do them. You don't have to plan anything in, in advance like you do when you go to Disney World. That's true. I love it. And the last thing I do want to talk about with Legoland is the uh, their mini land. Their Legoland parks around the world are known kind of for their super detailed uh, mini lands. Obviously, the one in Orlando, when I went, it had some kind of New York icons. It had the Empire State Building. It had the Statue of Liberty. Was the Legoland New York, was it mostly New York based or did they have some of everything like what were some of the uh the cool model builds in the mini land yeah they i think there's like eight sections and a big one is of course new york city had tons of skyscrapers some of them were like 13 feet tall they were enormous um there were others uh, major cities as well like las vegas was a big one and then there's there's other scenes too like there's like a kind of wild westy area and where there's yeah. like uh, river rapids and then there was a skiing part and yeah a lot of a lot of variety it was very cool yeah when i was in florida they had a like a scale replica of the daytona international speedway they had kennedy space center which was really cool uh vegas new york washington dc they had a big white house and a big capital and all that so i think what the the lego master builders do and i think that's the term what they do is some of the craziest form of artwork and again, I'm a, I was a kid who grew up with Lego and I, there are people who do it far better than I've ever been able to do it. But just seeing some of these models up close and personal, I know there was at the Florida park, there was a full scale Mustang, a blue Mustang convertible, like yeah. built completely out of Lego. So, yeah, I mean, you, you could spend hours just looking at all the, the, the crazy attention to detail in the Miniland sets. And it's not just like the, the Miniland either. It's there are Lego models scattered throughout the entire resort, like a full size dinosaur, a full size elephant, zebras, all kinds of stuff. It's crazy for sure. Nick, what, what do you uh, what do you think about their area to expand? Is there a lot of land surrounding the the Legoland New York property, or what's oh, the? Yeah. Uh, there's there's always expansion on the horizon at Legoland. I feel like I know Legoland Florida is they they're putting something out every year. They're got, they've got a new water ride they're working on not to mention the whole Peppa Pig theme park that was announced built and will open in like 11 months. So it's, I feel like there's a ton of opportunity and constant growth from, you know, Merlin and the Legoland parks, but is there space around Legoland New York to kind of grow and expand? Oh yeah, I've heard that they own 500 acres and the park's only built on 150. 
but they've they've built the park like really uh, spread out so there's plenty of spaces where you can see like big <laughs> field of green grass where there's they could add future rides so there's there's plenty of room to expand i've I've heard that they're going to add a sea life aquarium if you look mm-hmm. on Wikipedia, but I don't, I don't know when or when that would be added. Um, things I'd like to see is, so the, the smallest coaster is 36 inch height requirement and the big one is 42. So I think if they added another coaster in between those two, in between 36 and 42 height requirement, uh, that, that would be something to really help round out their collections. You know, something like, uh, Fire Chaser Express or Dragonfly or Hidalgo because I think both of those are 38 or 39 inch height requirement. 39, yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes that makes a ton of sense. And I think, you know, again, there are Legoland parks all around the globe at this point. This one is brand new. And the other ones, you know, Legoland Florida has been around for 10 years. Legoland California and Legoland in Germany have been around even longer than that. So the future is bright for sure. Um, at Legoland, New York. Nor anything else you you want to add before we uh, we turn this podcast off? Tell me one more thing about Legoland. The hotel is really cool because it was kind of out of color. You liked so you liked the disco elevator at the hotel. Oh uh, yeah, because I dance white, and, yeah. I, and there's regular people singing. What oh about wow! The yeah, I got <laughs> no, that stinky wink. Oh, oh. no, actually it says. Oh, you stinky beat. <laughs> Bean. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Coaster 101 podcast. Thanks to Nick and Henry and Nora for hopping on and talking about Legoland New York this week. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure you're following us on social media. We are at Coaster 101 anywhere you get social media. Um, we are at Coaster101.com. And Nick has written a lot of really good articles about his recent trip to Legoland New York. So be be sure to check those out. Like we started last week, we're going to start reading reviews on the podcast. And this is a five-star review from Mr. Purple Giraffe, who says, know the topics well. The speakers know their topics well and deliberate politely and respectively. So Mr. Purple Giraffe, thank you so much for that review. Uh, if you've got any comments, questions, concerns, fan mail, uh, feel free to shoot us an email podcast at coaster101.com. Thanks, as always, to Justin Mabry for our theme music, and we will talk to you all again soon. See ya. Coaster 101.